Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're cooking corned beef and cabbage. Now, first of all, what is corned beef? Well, corned beef is a beef brisket that has been aged in a salt brine. And the corn comes from salt grains that were the size of corn. It's not, has nothing to do with corn the plant. It's just big chunks of salt that they soak it in and age it in. Traditionally, corned beef was a really cheap cut of meat. Not so much now good luck finding a cheap anything that's beef but it's saint patrick's day and this is a traditional dish so we're cooking it up and lots of folks still do and the good thing is is that because it's saint patrick's day lots of grocery store chains have corned beef on sale um you can cook this in a pot a dutch oven like i have here you can cook it in the oven on about 325 you're going to cook it the same length of time if you're cooking it in your pot or if you're cooking it in your oven about an hour per pound and then check it this is a crucial piece of kitchen equipment for making corned beef you want to make sure it's you can poke it with a fork and it's tender it's not done until it's tender and you cook it very slow and on low heat to make it tender because it's a cheap cut of meat of course like i said there's no such thing now and what we're going to do in our Dutch oven is we're just going to add a little water in it, put the corned beef in, add a little water, cook it on low. And then we're going to add some vegetables to it. We're going to, well, I'm going to add some onion when I start it, but we're going to add some cabbage, some carrots, some taters. And my granny, like I've got these cute little new red and white potatoes, but traditionally you would have used just a russet potato, which is what my granny called an arsh tater or Irish potato. And we're going to season it. I'm going to season mine with a little bit of pepper. And I might put some other stuff in it. Usually corned beef comes with, um, when you buy the briskets and the packets, and, the, and they're always in packets because it's aged, a lot of times it will have a seasoned packet in it. It has like mustard seeds and fennel and, you know, all kinds of spices in it. You can season it however you want. Add as many spices as you want. Here's something though you want to keep in mind because it is aged in that salt brine and I rinse mine off, but you can probably still see there's some chunks of salt on it. I didn't rinse it real, real well, but I didn't want a ton of that in there. And you're not going to want to pour all that brine in your pot when you're cooking it. If you do, it will be so salty you couldn't possibly add enough vegetables to it to get the salt out. So anyway, let's get this turned on here. You can also cook this in your pressure cooker. In your pressure cooker, of course, it won't take as long. And it, this is a great recipe for your Instapots and your other programmable pots. Um, maybe 90 minutes to cook the meat and then check it to make sure it's tender and then add your vegetables in another 15 or 20 minutes. So in your pressure cooker, you can have it done in less than two hours it's going to take a lot longer if you're doing a big one on the stove like this is only two and a half pounds so it should be done in a couple of hours two and a half three hours even on the stove or in the oven but you can cook this in a pressure cooker you can also cook it in a crock pot if you're cooking it in a crock pot you want to cook it for eight ten hours maybe even longer check it with your fork so i'm just going to put my brisket in there and then, oh, it definitely isn't fork tender now. I'm going to add some water to it. You can completely cover it if you want to. Um, I'm not going to completely cover it because I want to do, you know, I'm going to add my vegetables and stuff. But you want to keep an eye on this as it cooks for the hour per pound. Make sure it doesn't dry out. Keep a lid on it. You don't have to completely cover it with water if you keep a lid on it, because if you keep a lid on it, the steam's going to cook it. And um, just check it with your fork. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and I want a little pepper in mine to start with. So I'm going to add me a little pepper. And I did put this in here fat side up. And I did that because I want the fat to run down in the meat. That will help make it tender. You know, cheap cut of meat. A little fat's good. I'm going to add my onions. And that's all I'm going to add to it until it's tender. And just let it sit here with the lid on it for about two and a half hours, checking on it occasionally, poking it with my fork. And when it gets close to done, I'm going to cut my potatoes at least in half. And I know a lot of folks would put these potatoes in their hole because it's pretty. But if you cut them in half, then all the juices and the flavor from your roast can get in your potatoes and they will be much more flavorful. They're going to cook a little faster, but I've got small carrots, so that's fine. And I said, much better. And we're going to chop up our cabbage when it gets close. I don't want to chop up my cabbage now because this has got a couple of hours at least. And if I chop up my cabbage now, it's going to be all dried out. And of course, if you're making a bigger one, you're going to want more cabbage. I have a small head of cabbage because I'm only making a two and a half pound brisket. So we'll be back in a couple hours to see what our brisket looks like when it's very close to done. And we'll add our vegetables. Okay, my little two and a half pound corned beef has been cooking probably for three and a half hours. It's been cooking considerably longer than the hour per pound. But we're going to take a look at it here and I'm going to show you what it looks like. You can see there I have plenty of liquid in it and you want to keep plenty of liquid in it. Now it is this strange pink color and if you've never made one, you're going to think, my heavens, what's wrong with this? It is not getting done at all. Well, that pink color is because it has been aged in that salt brine. It's not going to turn brown like a regular cut of roast beef would, like your regular pot roast. But if you can stick the fork in it and it's tender, then it's done and that's what you want. And then you can add your vegetables to it. Now, if you happen to not like some of these vegetables in particular, you don't have to add them but it's corned beef and cabbage and normally it does have the carrots and the taters in it my granny didn't say arse taters but anyway and you can add more water to this if you want to to cover up your vegetables it's just kind of up to you and i did cut my potatoes all in half so that i would get flavor in my potatoes like i said i was going to and I also cut off any little spots that were on them because even these fancy little taters have spots. Now, generally speaking, you want to let these cook for a few minutes before you add your cabbage because cabbage is going to cook much faster than your carrots and your potatoes. So just put the lid back on it and let these cook for a few minutes. And like I said, you can add more juice in it if you want to. Um, it really probably has plenty enough juice to cover all my vegetables. I would not add any more salt to this until after those vegetables are cooked and I see how much salt it's going to need. Because even if you rinse it, it's still going to have a lot of salt in the meat and that flavor is still going to be in there. And I'm not adding any more pepper because if you remember, I put like a whole teaspoon of pepper on that when I cooked it because I wanted to really season the meat good with the pepper like it was seasoned with the salt. And the only other thing we put in here for flavor is our onion. So we're going to let that cook. Eh, the taters and the carrots were little, maybe 10 minutes, not long at all. And then we're going to add our cabbage. Now I cut my cabbage up and depending on how big your head of cabbage is, that's going to kind of determine how you cut it. I cut mine in eight pieces and then just cut it up in about one inch chunks. And you can throw that in there just a few minutes before your other vegetables are done. It's not going to take this more than five ten minutes at the most to completely cook and it won't take those little potatoes and carrots long and you don't need to bust these chunks up they will bust up when they cook so that's how you do it if you want it chunked up or if you want it in big pieces so you can actually serve a piece of cabbage with your roast beef while we're waiting on our vegetables to cook here i want to share matthew 6 14 and 15 with you and this comes right after Jesus gives the Lord's Prayer. When his disciples asked, how do we pray? And he gave them the Lord's Prayer. He put Matthew 6, 14 and 15 right after that and kind of tied it in together. 
But in Jesus' words, he said, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And this verse is kind of one of those verses that is critical to our Christian walk. It is very hard to find peace and joy if we have unforgiveness in our heart. And in fact, Jesus said we're never going to have peace if we have unforgiveness in our heart. He said if we don't forgive, God's not going to forgive us. And it is the forgiveness that gives us the peace and the joy. St. Patrick is an excellent example of what forgiveness can do, not just in one person's life, but in the course of history of an entire nation. St. Patrick was born royalty. He was kidnapped taken to a foreign land, escaped, went back and preached the gospel to the entire nation of Ireland. And because of St. Patrick, many Irish people professed their faith in Christ and became Christians. But he went back, forgave them, and told them about Christ. So when we forgive other people it not only changes us and our lives and we can find peace and joy and hope and happiness but it really does change the whole world and if you've never read the story of saint patrick his story is definitely worth reading it is an excellent example of how we should live our lives as christians and certainly how we should be sharing the gospel as our own personal testimony so take some time this St. Patrick's Day while you're eating your corned beef and your Irish soda bread and maybe you're even having a drink to celebrate That's, and read his story. Okay, our carrots and our potatoes should be just about done by now. And you can see there, they're all down in the juice just fine. Um, and they're boiling and that's what you want. I'm going to go ahead now and add my cabbage in and I'm going to let it cook for just about five to ten minutes it kind of depends test all your vegetables with a fork including your cabbage and make sure they're all done just add it in there kind of careful you don't want to slop it out and burn yourself and whether you want it chopped up or you want it whole it's kind of or not whole but whether you want it chopped up and or you want it in like big chunks it's kind of up to you and it sort of depends on whether or not you're making more of a stew or you're making something you can display on a plate and look pretty. It more is the way it looks than the way it tastes. Now I'm not going to add any more juice to this because the steam will cook my cabbage and because I'm going to make a little gravy for this. Now my dad's mom, Barbara McAtee, obviously was Irish and her and my granny um, my mom's mom, her name was Chastain, or Chastain, depending on how you pronounce it. And my grandpa was Stevens, so they were both of Irish descent. And they both, both my grandmothers, always made gravy with this. And part of that was because they both came through the Depression. And I expect that this dish probably traditionally always had gravy in it because gravy is one of those things that just makes the meal go farther. It stretches it, it gives it more body, and you can dip bread in gravy. And with this, you're gonna wanna make you a pan of Irish soda bread because corned beef and cabbage is just not complete unless you've got some Irish soda bread on the top. And I'm gonna link Irish, an Irish soda bread video in here it is super simple to make. And my Irish soda bread is done. It can be cool in here for just a minute while we finish up our corned beef and cabbage. But I'm gonna put a link to that video in the description and in an end card. So go all the way to the end if you don't know how to make Irish soda bread, if you don't already have your own recipe, and the video will be there. You can just click on it on your smart TV or your phone or whatever. But to make the gravy, you need about half a cup of water and some cornstarch. And we're just going to put about two tablespoons, and I'm not measuring it, but two tablespoons will do it if you want to measure it, in cold water. Make sure your water's cold and give that a little stir. 
Now you can also make your gravy. You can make a roux with some butter or some, some other kind of fat in a skillet and you can brown some flour in that and make a roux and then stir your roux in here. But cornstarch kind of gives you instant gravy. And that's the way that my nanny always did it, my dad's mom. And granny would do it both ways. She, she usually didn't go to the trouble of doing a roux in a pan though, because that was just too much trouble. They had other stuff to do. They weren't just cooking dinner. So anyway, cornstarch just makes instant gravy. Before our corned beef and cabbage gets done, all we're gonna do is just add this carefully into our pot. And we're gonna kind of mix it around so that it disperses itself as this finishes cooking. And it's gonna turn this liquid in here into a nice brown gravy that we can dip our soda bread in and it'll coat our vegetables real nice. I mean, you could dip the soda bread just in the broth that's in here, but you know, like I said, the gravy kind of adds some body to it and that's all you do. Just kind of mix it just a tiny bit. And then when we dip this out, it'll have a brown gravy on it. And it won't be super thick. We're not making like breakfast gravy. This is gravy for your roast, but that's it. Instant gravy. You don't need a packet or anything like that. And then we're gonna put the lid back on so our cabbage will finish cooking. Now, the only other thing I have here is I have the seasoning packet that came in with my corned beef. You don't have to put anything else on it. This looks like it's mostly mustard seeds and stuff. If you want to put this on it, take your roast out and your potatoes and put it on a platter. Sprinkle this on it and just let it sit for five to ten minutes before you slice your corned beef. And you're going to want to let it rest for five to ten minutes after it finishes cooking before you slice it. And then you're going to slice it across the grain so that the grain is short pieces. You don't want to slice it long ways so you got big, long, skinny pieces of grain. That's not going to make for good eating. Okay, our vegetables are almost done. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull my little corned beef roast out of here. And like I said, I just did, this one was like two and a half pounds. And you saw what size it was when I put it in there. Uh, that's the fatty side. Now, you can leave that on or you can take it off. The grain in this one is kind of running this way, sort of. And I'm trying to figure out which would be the best way to cut it. I'm thinking this side right here. But you just slice it however thick you want it sliced. And you serve it like that. And it's literally that simple. And that's what it looks like. See, it's still got this real pink color. And that's because it was aged in that salt brine. And now we can cut our heat off. Our vegetables should be done. And if you take your roast out, your corned beef out, while your vegetables finish cooking, that'll give it that few minutes to rest before you actually serve it. I want to show you kind of what's down in the pot here. You can see there that our carrots are in there and our potatoes and the cabbage is all falling apart. And we do have a very thin gravy in there. Not super thick like breakfast gravy, but that will stick to your bread. It will stick to your vegetables. And you can serve this right out of the pot or you can take it all out and arrange it on your platter. Just however you want to serve it. It's a very traditional St. Patrick's Day meal. Um, folks eat it all year long though. And like I said, traditionally it was a cheap cut of beef, but nowadays there's no such thing. This week though, it is on sale in all the major grocery store chains. So you've got time to go out and get you one and time to cook it for St. Patrick's Day. And if you like it, keep an eye on the sale prices and go get it when it's on sale. I wanna thank y'all so much for joining us again in the Hillbilly Kitchen. If you haven't already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first.